I want to make a movie about art. But for a movie you need money. With stars we can get money. Okay, let's hire some stars. There's very little contemporary art that could exist without conceptual art. That could exist without conceptual art and pop art and, and, um, and to some extent feminism. And minimalism before conceptual art, I mean, because conceptual art couldn't exist in a way without minimalism. The kinds of conceptual paradigms that, that one sees everywhere in contemporary art, I mean, it's the use of language, um, different forms of research, different forms of systematic, different systematic approaches to, to production, um, site specificity, which isn't exclusively part of conceptual art, the use of photography, the use of video. I mean, it's just everywhere. We are projecting a fiction. It is curse a film featuring only art stars, but stars who change art as an institution. Here, the artist's conversation is an art formation. Nonetheless, the content of the documentary film is a fiction. First exhibition in uh, 69, which was Leverkus in Leverkusen, Concept Art. The very first exhibition under this title brings something like 80, 90 people from more or less all around the Western world. And inside these people, you were having people who today, for everyone, will make no sense to put into conceptual art. For example, uh, Bob Ryman, who will think to put Bob Ryman as a conceptual artist, Agnes Martin. But at that time, the people said, what is this blank uh, painting? What is that make no sense? Conceptual art. So everything which was making not sense at all, or not a clear sense, was supposedly conceptual art. This film projects a conceptual art that criticizes all traditional artistic categories. Authorship, the signature of the great master, the original work and the dominance of the visual image. All of this is replaced with formations made up of inspirations and ideas. You decided not to get portrayed as an image of yourself and so maybe I should ask um, are you not only a no-studio artist, maybe also a no-portrait artist? No, well, it's... It's, um, it's this question of personal subjectivity, and uh, I never understand or never know why it's placed into a, re a representation, whether it be video or uh, whatever. The history of art is the history of struggles around strategies of representation. That's why this film about conceptual art is also a film about movie making.
Das ist ja dieser Punkt, dass man sich in dieser Hybris bewegt. Es ist etwas da, aber man kann es so nicht festhalten. Man muss immer den Modus finden oder selbst erschaffen, selbst erzeugen, in welchem man etwas zeigt. Für mich stellen Ihre Filme äh, ein frühes Beispiel dar, wie man äh, verschiedene Realitätskonstrukte, Objekte, zusammenbringt. Wie schätzen Sie diese Form, diese selbstgewählte Form ein? Ist es ähm, der Versuch, einen einen reflektierenden Film zu machen oder ist es tatsächlich mehr so etwas wie die Moderation des Materials äh, zu bringen, was man dem Publikum zeigt? Ich habe das immer für mich selber eher anders erklärt, indem ich mich selber zum Produktionsmittel gemacht habe, ja, äh, vor der Kamera. Ja. Ich gehöre dazu, ich bin, bin ein Produktionsmittel, wie die Kamera ist, wie das Mikrofon ist, äh, wie meine Ideen oder äh, Ideen von anderen, die ich zitiere, es sind, so bin ich es auch als Person. Und so äh, kann ich einen Platz vor der Kamera oder hinter der Kamera haben. Äh, äh, und äh, das war eigentlich meine Funktion eher. Hat auch ein bisschen mit der, äh, mit der Kargheit äh, zu tun, mit der ich gewohnt bin zu arbeiten. Also ich bin sozusagen meine verlässlichste Quelle. Vielleicht unzulänglich hier und da, ja, aber dann kann ich es auch sozusagen, wenn so wenig mir zur Verfügung steht, dann kann ich das auch gleich selber vor der Kamera machen, sagen, vortragen. We have to go back to the uh, early 60s and uh, of course there's uh, the idea of minimalism was as a reaction to uh, abstract expressionism here and uh, it took different ways. Pop art was one and minimal was another. The seed that uh, really engendered uh, pop art was the idea that came through uh, say Johns and Rauschenberg from uh, Duchamp and the main uh, ingredient was the idea of, of irony and the idea of irony came more or less through both Dada and Surrealism and that was, those were two things, uh, two movements that were uh, completely uh, anathema to uh, those of us who came through uh, uh, minimalism. One of the, uh, my background uh, ideas was the art of uh, Edward Moybridge and, and uh, the idea of uh, a serial progression came from that. And I thought that uh, what I wanted to do was to make, instead of an art of form, uh, into an art of uh, content. But then I had the idea that um, uh, to make a system and the basic form uh, that I was involved with was, was a cube, but the basic uh, uh, component of the cube was a square. And then the idea that um, make it all of the possible combinations, which made it into a uh, finite system. For me, conceptual art is anarchistic humor, not, not neo-academicism, like Kasuth or art language. good example would be Ed Ruscha, Stanley Brown, Juan Kawara. The idea was uh, to make something that was um, 
uh, at least in the very beginning with my magazine pages, something that was disposable and would destroy the idea of value. Also, it was uh, dumb, uh, seemed to make everything very dumb, but be very intelligent at the same time. It was a kind of, uh, um, a kind of deadpan humor. Solowit, who I showed with when I had a gallery, said his, uh, uh, his um, uh, wood lattice pieces were, uh, were to be um, uh, playgrounds for his cats. When I think about the idea of humor, uh, I don't uh, think about that word exactly. I mean, there's something that, that, that people call humor. I don't call my work humorous, but, but there is an element of that that it occurs when um, something unexpected happens in, in the art, and, and that can make for, if you don't call it humor, you might call it amusement. And even the driest kind of conceptual art has, has amusement. And so people quickly say, well, that's humorous, you know. I, when I think of conceptual art and, uh, and, and in its uh, purest form, I think, well, I always think of Lawrence Wiener, a friend of mine. He, he, well, he, did, this, he did this work called um, To Throw an Object from One Country to Another. And uh, so this had no, uh, he didn't make a painting of this, and he didn't, uh, I, I think it just exists in the air. But it is, it's, it's his creation. When you consider that, you might say, well, in many ways that's humorous. And in lots of ways it's amusing. And in certain other ways it's unexpected. Uh, you know, this is an unexpected thing to come along in, what, 5,000 years of making art for someone to say, this is my art, to throw a an object from one country to another. <sighs> when you say conceptual art, no. The stuff I make is real. Turn off the lights in the old words of uh, Ed Reiner, you can trip over it. It can fuck up your life. Uh, that's not very conceptual. <laughs> it's a material reality. So, no, I don't really, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, can't, I can't tell you where it fit in. They use it, I know what they mean, so why should I make a lot of time saying, but I'm not, I am, I'm not, no. If you, somebody wants to be a conceptual artist, more power to them. I'm really quite content being an artist. I always say I only write in self-defense. I uh, was not a good writer and, and hated to write and uh, wanted only to write these uh, uh, manifestos, if you call it, uh, to clarify my own mind as to what I was doing. And I thought if I could write down what I, what I was really thinking, then I could think more clearly. I think that it was really up to my generation and my working context to um, uh, raise the, the, the issues of language and context. The language is always there. The question of whether you deal with it critically through the front door or you let it in, come in uncritically through the back door. The only way to, of, of taking political responsibility for the production of meaning was to deal with the language from the front door, critically, and use it. Put it up front, deal with language issues. One can use all kinds of um, uh, language, but, um, uh, and you can take from all sorts of arenas, but in the end you understand your responsibility as an artist is the production of meaning.